For centuries, Mother Malum and her army of sea slugs terrorised the minds of the universe's most influential figures, conquering countless worlds. But how did they go about building such a reputation? How were they received by the Gilanorians? And what happened when the adventurer inevitably stepped in? I'm Iris Galaxy Shark and this is RuneScape Lore. Mother Malum and her sea slug children are strange mollusk-like creatures that have the ability to possess and control the minds of other species, notably humans. The weaker sea slugs, while individually sentient, appeared to live with the sole purpose of serving their mother and helping her achieve total domination over their current world. While it's unknown when Mother Malum began her rampage across the many worlds, it could date back even further than the Third Age of Gilanor. Once a target world had been found, the creature would descend deep underground, remaining hidden while she prepared for her attack. Here, she would breed, spawning hundreds, even thousands of sea slugs, until there was an equal number of sea slugs as there were inhabitants of this world. This has been known to take many years, but patience was no issue. Eventually, when a big enough sea slug army had been formed, they would strike. Effortlessly, and in some cases even overnight, entire populations would be possessed. With no one left to stand against this threat, Mother Malum would be content with the state of this world, and begin to search for a new victim. It should be noted that while the sea slugs require a carrier, or in other words a victim, to communicate externally, they have a psychic connection to one another, which allows their leader to give them orders from a distance, so that she can stay well hidden until it is no longer necessary to do so. At some point, Mother Malum arrived on Gilanor and, as with other worlds, began to build her army. Here, it appears that she chose a different method of conquering the world. Rather than immediately enslaving every single being, Mother Malum decided to target the most influential figures, hoping that she could use them to control the uninfected humans, saving both time and effort. This, however, does not appear to have been the most effective plan. The Temple Knights of Saradomin, alongside the Lesser Order, the White Knights, noticed the strange behaviour of these leaders, and somehow traced them back to Malum, who was hiding in a great fortress deep beneath the sea, east of Kandarin. As expected, the knights, who were employed by Saradomin to protect the Order of Gilanor, travelled towards the Slug Citadel and prepared to fight. Unfortunately, they were rather unsuccessful. Dozens of white knights lost their lives, or more accurately, their minds, being possessed by the sea slugs guarding their queen. Merely a handful of knights escaped, but the loss of their allies did not discourage them. After investing a great deal of effort into research and the gathering of materials, a new method was discovered that could in theory break the mental bond between the parasitic sea slug and their victim. Armed with this new knowledge, the Temple Knights launch a second attack on the slug citadel. Even with the ability to nullify the possession of the creatures, it soon became clear that the Mother Malum could not be killed with mere swords and bows. A backup plan was quickly formed, and this one would prove to be far more effective. Rather than killing the beast, the Temple Knights lured their opponent into a cave system just on the shore, and then trapped her behind huge doors. These doors were then locked using a magical enchantment that would, for better or worse, be forgotten as time passed. It seemed as though the Temple Knights had been successful in ending the threat, and to some extent this was indeed the case. Mother Malum had been effectively contained inside of the temple beneath what was now known as Witchhaven but this did not stop her from controlling the sea slugs on the other side of the door. Late in the Fifth Age, a fishing platform was erected just off the coast east of Ardoin, leaving the people of Witchhaven in poverty since their primary trade, fish, had now been taken from them by the Kandarin fishing platform. Eventually though, the fishermen on the platform started reeling in something rather strange. They had caught some sea slugs, Unsurprisingly, once they had been brought onto the platform, the slugs possessed as many of the fishermen as they could. Slowly they gained control over the entire platform, with the exception of Bailey, the keeper who decided to take refuge in one of the small huts. Bailey had discovered that the attacking creatures feared fire, keeping them at bay by using this knowledge. After some time, an inhabitant of Witchhaven, known as Kent, and his son Kenneth took a trip out to the platform and discovered the threat that existed there. Unable to escape back to the mainland, the two hid, alongside Bailey, until the adventurer could come to see what had happened. They had been sent by Caroline, the wife of Kent and the mother of Kenneth. Shortly after this happened, the slugs made their way to the mainland and began to possess most of the villagers. This was noticed by Jake O'Neill, a retired temple knight who had decided to take up the life of a fisherman and had been living in the area. 
Allegedly, the mayor, who was, to quote, about as religious as a dead dog on a termite mound. The mayor, despite this, had commissioned work on what was supposedly a Saradominus temple nearby, and was rather suspiciously making use of runes to do this. Jake reported his findings to the Temple Knights, who deployed one of their newest initiates to investigate. This initiate happened to be the adventurer who had rescued Kenneth not long before. Led by the village's priest who had not yet been possessed, the adventurer entered this temple and discovered the door, learning of the Temple Knight Crusade that had happened long before, and also learning what was held behind this door. Right after this discovery was made, the mayor managed to place a slug on Priest Maledict's neck, turning him into the side of the slugs as well. The initiate, who was unaware of that, was then convinced to help repair a book. This book allegedly was a holy text of Saradomin and detailed methods of strengthening the seal on the door. After some exploration, the book was restored and the spell was cast. Almost immediately, the adventurer realised they had been tricked. The spell, rather than guaranteeing that Mother Malum stayed imprisoned, opened the door, releasing her. As the Slug Queen approached the adventurer, the Slug Prince revealed itself, but they were quickly killed by the now angry adventurer. Malum then threatened to take the adventurer as their new host, but were not able to do so as their potential human victim was teleported away by Savant. The Temple Knights entered a state of high emergency, knowing how severe this threat was. Rather inconveniently, the research notes that previously explained the anti-mind control methods used by their predecessors had been destroyed in an accident involving a dragon. After consulting some seers, a serum was designed that could be used to the same effect. This serum required an actual sea slug and the gland of a stalker called the Seeker of Truth, which had been trapped within Demonheim by the Majorat Bilrak. In fact, by the time the adventurer reached it, the stalker was dead, but the gland could still be obtained. Armed with this new serum, the adventurer who had recently been promoted to Prozolite returned to the Slug Citadel, which had now been raised from the sea. They did this alongside three allies, Ezekiel Lovecraft, an explosives expert, Lady Evocation, Temple Knight and niece to Certification, and Kenneth who, as it turned out, possessed incredible magical abilities which he had used to age at a drastically increased rate. After fighting through hordes of possessed knights who had lost their lives in the original attack against Mother Malum centuries before, the team reached the chamber of the Slug Queen. This time the Queen was far more successful in possessing the adventurer. She discarded her previous host and attempted to take control of the proselyte. She had great difficulty in doing this though because the strength of the adventurer's mind was too much for her. While this was happening, Kenneth and Ezekiel bombarded the Queen with the anti-mind control serum weakening her connection with the lesser sea slugs. Eva then challenged the remaining guards of the Mother Malum, including the possessed Maya Hobbs. After knocking out Hobbs, she attacked the Mother, but was thrown aside using a strange magic, crashing into a great pillar. This would be the mistake that led to the Mother Malum's downfall. Eva began to hit the pillar, weakening it until it toppled over, falling on the Queen, killing her immediately and freeing the adventurer. All of the other victims of the sea slug were also released from their possession. It was later revealed that, once possessed, a person would not remember their actions, sometimes believing that the events they saw were some terrible nightmare. This was the case for Lucy, the girl who Malum took as a host before the adventurer. Despite being many decades older than she had been when she was first possessed, Lucy still acted like a young girl, not understanding what had happened, and soon passing away. It may also be worth noting that at some point, the penguin captain Marlin was apparently possessed by a sea slug, although it may simply have been an excuse to cover up his insanity. With the queen dead, the sea slugs had no direction, and disappeared entirely. Because of that, it seems likely that we will not see this ancient threat ever again, and so this video is coming to an end. Thank you for watching, if you found this video interesting, why not leave a like or even give me some feedback in the comments, or do whatever you want to do, it's your life. Make sure to hit that subscribe button though if you feel like it, you want to get notified when I upload new episodes. Once again, thank you all so much for watching, I've been Aris Galaxy Shark and I'll see you next time.